Great about Abraham. Hey. Now, serving is not just for our own benefit. Amen. Amen. Serving is, is for others. It takes a, a, a carefulness, a degree of care and caution. It takes commitment and devotion. Devoted commitment. Amen. And, 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 and you got to know that you're qualified. To serve and do, if you're afraid a lot of times, the devil will use that to hinder you from doing God's work. Because we ask you to do something, you say, oh no, I can't do that. Can't should not be in our vocabulary. But fear so often time is... God want you to use the best. He want you to give him the best. He told Jeremiah, he said, before you were born, I knew thee and appointed thee and ordained thee to be what? A prophet. What has God called you and ordained you to do? Is it cooking in the kitchen? Are you here when you need it? Is it ushering? Are you here singing in the choir? Are you meeting those rehearsals so that you can tune your voice for the Lord? Is it ushering, deacon, trustee? What have God called you? Because serving is an honor and also is power. In serving. Amen. He said. God intends for us Christians to. To be dynamic. In what we do. Special. Special care. We just can't. Do as the world do. We can't go around slamming folk. And laying folk out. And cursing them. Because they asked us to do a simple thing to help. We are, we are designed to serve. Only it says, it says, don't take this liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. It says, for you, brethren, 13th verse here where I, where I started reading. For you, brethren, have been called. To liberty, only do not use the liberty as an opportunity to the flesh. But through love, I remember I was telling y'all about stress. Now, you all also reminded me, Pastor, I want you to smile sometime. Y'all remember that? Anybody remember saying, Pastor? You know, what happened to the smile on your face? Sometimes we look rough because of what faces us or what we've been through, what's been said to us, how we've been treated. Look, be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. We have to learn to keep a smile. And I'm learning. I'm guilty of that one because I've looked serious for a long time uh, trying to serve God's people. But sometimes when you serve God's people at your best, it's not good enough. God is calling us. Everybody can't be up in the pulpit. Shouldn't be up in the pulpit. Because 
The body of Christ and ministry, Paul describes it as the physical body. What if it was only all heads? What if we only all had legs? Only all of us had feet and toes. What if the whole congregation was nothing but eyes? Ears. Wouldn't we look a mess? But each one of us has a function to do, to serve, and it's to bless somebody else. Somebody else. Servants have responsibilities. Romans 12, 1 tell us to present our bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service, right? And it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. God want to transform us so that we will be powerful in serving. He don't want us to be weak servants. You sitting at the table one something to eat and somebody come over and get you a little dab of banana pudding. Give me some banana pudding if you're going to give me something. I, I, you know, we were serving people at the shipyard one time, and you know how we served dentals with Jack, you know how we were fixed dentals, and, 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 and somebody asked me, so would you take some dentals down to the shipyard? I said, look, I'll tell y'all something right now. Don't send me down in the shipyard. We hardworking people down there. You can put a, a dab of this and a dab of that. Put some food on the plate. And don't be scared to serve. Stretching the meal so that, so that it'll go a long way. Make sure that one person is satisfied. You will serve. You've seen folks, they dip a little dab and make you want to get up and... No. Then you go to some of these places, you play big, big, play, pay big money, and they act like they scared to serve you. Scared you're going to get satisfied. I think y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Stretchings. Leaving, making everybody dissatisfied when they leave. Oh, wow, wasn't that me? What me? Mama, you don't do that. When I come to your house, you... Serving. I'm talking about serving. Serving, the power of serving. And, and, and also, after you present yourself, you need to yield to become an instrument. When you come to God, God has called you, you come up, and because you've heard the call of God, then you yield yourself. Nothing like trying to handle a bucking mule. You come up there, you want to serve, but you want to jump and, and be over here and over there and everywhere, we're all in the stuff. Pastor Elam used to say, get in your lane. Know where you belong. You want to serve you all over the place. I ain't doing nothing. Find out what your serving abilities are. May not be like mine. Don't try to imitate me. Don't try to imitate my B or whoever. Find your place. And when you find it, you will fit just like an egg in a crate. You won't have no room for rocking and moving all around. Falling all out. God wants some servants. Some, some Christian dynamic serving Full with dynamic personalities, smiles on their face. I'm learning. I gotta learn. You gotta learn. Smile and say thank you. And somebody give you something. Like, I don't like this. What will you give me this for? Huh? Have an attitude. Maybe they didn't get it right that time. But if you act right, they'll get it right the next time. You treat folk with a messed up mind and heart, and like you are, and they ain't coming back to you. Give you something and you act like crazy. Act just right down, outright crazy. No, they're not coming back. 
try to give you something that you didn't appreciate. It. Be willing to do, to receive. There are benefits in yielding yourself to the Lord. Well, look, uh, let's talk about one servant. I got one in mind, Abraham. Remember Abraham chapter 12? He said, come here, Abraham. Get me out of thy father's house. To a land I will show you. Because Abraham, I want to bless you. Didn't God do that to Abraham? Abraham lived in an idolatrous house. His father and all the relatives of his served idols. They didn't serve the living God. They served these wooden, you've seen some of these wooden idols and folk with cars and all this stuff. You can't get folk out of their houses. I'm, I'm comfortable here. I, I, I just can't go today. I just don't feel like raining outside. And Lord, I just don't want to get out in there. Can't get you out your house after God blesses you with a house. Beautiful house. Nice car with an ass on it. Cars. Clothes to wear. And then when Sunday comes or whatever day is service, you know, just feeling, I just, I don't know how in the world I'm going to make it. But let Monday come around. And you know you got to push that clock down there. I guarantee you, you're not going to drag in there like you do in church. I get there when I get there. Lord, my foot is hurting. I just don't know how I'm going to make it. My back and you can, the devil got you calling everything. Learn to see what God says about you. I'm the heel protecting my health. I can do all things through Christ. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The hummer shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This poor man here, man. Woo! The Lord delivered him of all his. They looked upon him and was when you talk back to God, learn to say what God says about you. But as a servant, you got to yield yourself. Serve the Lord. I'm coming home now. Get the attitude when you come before the Lord. He said, first of all, don't come before me empty handed. I mean, if you don't have nothing, that's another thing. But if God has blessed you and Anybody in here that God ain't blessed? Don't raise your hand. When God has blessed you, you are to put aside. Paul would often teach the churches uh, of Philippi and, and, and Galatia and, uh, and those churches that he visited. He would always say, set aside a little something. So when I come by, I preach to you. Or when somebody is sent to preach to you, when you go to the household of God, set aside something so that you can bless God. Songwriter said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, when you come in the house, bring a little money with you. If the Lord has blessed you with a job, you got some finances, then don't just come in here and tie your lips up. You can't, don't have a praise on your lips. And when you come in here, just don't sit down. There's power in serving. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving and sing. Know ye that the Lord and he is God. It is he who has made us. Not we are saved. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He deserves praise. Did you wake up this morning? Were you feeling all right when you woke up? Do you know how it feel to feel bad? Have pain? And you wake up and you say, Lord, it's a good day. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, Lord. I thank you. I think I put on my clothes that you bless me with, Lord. I think I step into my nice shower, bathtub, or whatever you got there in your house for some bath bathing. 
If it's a basin, what we used to use, a basin. Now we got showers and bathtubs. Got the little fancy doodad where you can, you don't have to find the water, it'll find you. We live in the most blessed time. And you mean to tell me the older generation did more with little than we doing with much. Look like we are just wasting things. We got so much, we ain't know how to tell God thank you. Oh Lord, did I forget? I find myself doing that sometimes. Lord, you know I forgot. Let me get down. Let me hurry up and get down on my knees. Because God, you bless me. But I'm human, Lord. Holy Spirit, help me to remember. Remember the days of the Lord. How he blessed you. Abraham, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing now. God told Abraham, he said, come. He said, I want to bless you. I want to bless you to be a great nation. He said, I want to bless you. I want to put my blessing on you. Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and added no sorrow to it. When the blessing of the Lord is on you, somebody going to be getting mad at you. Because the Lord's blessing shows up it makes a difference. It shows you off. Abraham, when Abraham came and got away from his family, the Lord began to bless him. He said, look up at the stars, Abraham, and if you can count them. Hallelujah. Abraham lived to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. He had cattle. He had soldiers. He had a household of servants that was just so unreal how God had blessed him. Let's see, right? Just so unreal. And when Abraham got, got up in age, mind you now, God didn't call him till he was 75. Ain't that something? Some of us can't get to 40 and 50. If you, if you live right, Say right, God will call you in your old age. I'm a living witness. I'm not, I'm not standing before you. And when he called Abraham, he began to bless him, bless him, bless him. I remember when Abraham got old and gray headed, he told his servant, he said, he said, take these camels and, and, and sheep and, and, and whatnot and, and go back to my father's house and get a wife for my son. Folks so crazy out there, he didn't even want his son to marry none of them. Idolaters. Tree worshippers, sun worshippers. And when he went back, when he went back, uh, he said, he asked, uh, he asked his master before he left, he said, how will I know? He says, the Lord will lead you, the angel of the Lord will take you there, and you'll know, and she'll know. And when he got there, he told, he told uh, the, the girls, there was a bunch of them girls, that, uh, they, they came down to water their camels. They had Cadillac camels back then. <laughs> Girl came down to water her camel, and he says, my master. And she started recognizing, it there was one that paid attention. And, and, and he said, is this the one, Lord? And she began to, Talk to him. And Abraham said, My master is rich. Read it in the 26th chapter of Isaiah of Genesis, uh, in that chapter somewhere. He said, My master is rich. He's rich in, in land and silver and gold and cattle and camels and sheep and oxen. Abraham didn't have none of that stuff when, he, when God called him. And he says, he want to do something for his son. That's what we to live for. I, you're young, you're young, granny, right now, granddad, and, and when, when as you grow, 
Those of us that are grandparents, Sister Jack, you know what I'm talking about. Don't them grandchildren come to your house? I'm talking to Sister Jack. You ain't got nothing coming yet. I'm talking to Sister Jack right now. Sister Jack, don't you? But you just wait on. Mother Mary, where you at? Want them grandchildren come? You want them blessed, don't you? You live a powerful servant of life before the Lord. And your grandchildren, he said, he told Abraham, God did, so I bless your children, children. I've lived long enough to know that God is true to his word. How do I know that? Because the blessing of the Lord is on me, on my household, on my family. The Simmons clan sitting here, we didn't used to be in church. My sister-in-law sitting there married, the second oldest in my family. We didn't go to church. Didn't know what I done. In those days, I, I, I saw folk going to church, going to the house of God. But I, look, God has a way. He has a way of bringing us. And all he's looking for is somebody to yield. He's looking for some service. Put those hands together. God is looking for some service. Are you willing to serve?